Hi, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today I want to do a quick video response. I was actually going to wait and do another video coming up here by this weekend. And uh, by the way, I apologize. I haven't done any videos lately. I've been just killing myself on this old 1936 house. I'm doing a complete interior remodel of just tons of painting and detail work. And I just wrapped up today and got off a little early. And so you know what? I'm going to go home and do a video response to Dave at Lawn Boys Post 1975. Did a really cool little uh, question about, as adults, do we still play video games for the same reason we did as we were, you know, as we were kids. And I thought it deserved a, a video response. I left a kind of a detailed comment. But, um, by the way, let's just get off from work. This is for you, Dave. Oh, thank God. Have my first beer of the day. A nice Lagunitas IPA, which is made 90 minutes from here over in the wonderful town of Petaluma. One of the best IPAs Mark Bustler, classic gamer, also loves it. It's one of his favorite beers. But um, anyway, cheers, Dave, and everybody else. <laughs> it's not Friday yet, but it feels like Friday to me. Mm. Excellent, thank God. Anyway, um, uh, as far as the video response, I didn't. I've mentioned this before in other rants. I never had an Atari 2600 or any early gaming consoles as a kid. But I had a couple friends that did, and I'd get to play maybe every two, three weekends. I could spend the night at a friend's house, and you know, I'd get to play then. And I, when I had extra change and pocket change, which I'd either you know siphon around the house or doing odd jobs, I'd go to the arcades. And so the gaming was a big fun thing. It wasn't so much escapism, but it was having a good time, just being with my friends, just you know, having a blast on the Atari 2600. Um, we had so much fun in those systems, and it really wasn't until I was almost 25 by the time that I bought my first Commodore 64 uh, in 1987. I think it was late 86 or 87 in there somewhere. So I was well on my own and married and had an apartment and, you know, cars and uh, really was an adult when I got my first system. And, man, I was just obsessed with it. So gaming to me has become almost a way of making up for the childhood that I never had. This is another interesting way of looking at it. I actually like Dave's points, and his friends at work were asking him about it, and I thought that was interesting how, uh, you know, and even Dave, he has the same rationale. It's pretty much escapism. I mean, even I've got, you know, three customers. i got another new job i got to start tomorrow and a kitchen remodel and cabinets. Um, Saturday, I've got, you know, three appointments, driving all over town, um, just a lot of, i got to get, uh, get my supplies for this new job on Saturday. I have another house i got to start next Tuesday after I finish the cabinets, work on uh, the following Monday. So it's just hectic. Life is hectic. Work is hectic. Sometimes I get the job. Sometimes I don't. It's nice to have work again after being out of work for, you know, actually, you know, almost three months of very little work. So... I'm just getting fat or sitting at home and playing video games and watching TV, but... Mmm. Got a really good hoppy flavor. You can really taste the hops in it, but... Anyway, um... So, it, today it's primarily an escapism, you know, deal for me. Um... Uh, you know, and still, I get the reminders. I hear the cell phone ring if I don't shut it off, or my wife will ask me to do something for... Uh, Okay, hold on, and I gotta you know pause the game and see what's going on or, or get back to someone. So um, it, it's hard. Like I'll play like right now. I'm playing that um, on the Xbox 360 Fallout Ultimate Carnage, which is a wonderful arcade racer, and it's just fun, you know. And I've been going through the career mode and unlocking all the tracks and cars, and I'm really having a blast with it. And I'm also playing, which I'm I'm, I'm going to announce. I have a secret pickups video with tons of stuff I've got from my game room. Are a lot of really cool things and tons of games from my new Xbox uh, setup, uh, which I'm really excited about. Thanks to many of you out there that have done so many very cool and hip Xbox pickup videos. I've been really excited and so inspired by it that um, I wanted to, to kind of do one for myself. So I, I bought a whole rash of them at my dimples, and then um, I went and ordered uh, four more that they had at two other stores. And then I also ordered one off from eBay that was really hard to find, which that came in last night. So I'm just waiting for the final two to come in. they got two over at Dimples right now. It might be tonight or tomorrow at the latest. I'm going to go pick up the last four games, and I'm going to do a massive pickups video with over 20 new Xbox games and some other goodies and secrets I got from my, from my game room I'm really excited about. So 
Um, but anyway, getting back to my all over the map with the ADD here, but um, getting back to Lawn Boy's post, um, it, it, it's important to take care of business. I don't, you know, regret having an adult life and having to do the things that I have to do to be responsible. And sometimes gaming takes a back seat. The same with movies. Sometimes I'm just too tired to watch a two hour and 15 minute movie. We just watched this great film called The Counselor by Ridley Scott. I really enjoy it. It got a lot of bad reviews. It was a little bit convoluted, uh, but really meaty, really a good story, and there were nice morals you could take away from the film. Uh, and that's rare. It took me two evenings to sit and watch that, you know, where I prefer typically watching a movie over one night. So even my gaming, I played about 90 minutes um, of gaming two nights ago. I didn't game at all last night. We actually, you know, watched, I'm watching The Terminator, the Sarah Chron uh, 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 it's Chronicles. Uh, season one, and I get season two. We're gonna, I'm rewatching those right now, um, and I'm playing a, a couple Xbox games, which I'll be talking about real soon, which are really cool, and uh, and I'm kind of going back and forth and playing this, you know, Ultimate Carnage. So it, for me, it's it's escapism. Then when I have the time off, like a good week off or so, then I'll play something really meaty, like The Last of Us or Fallout 3 or something fantastic like that, and then it becomes a really immersive, uh, like a vacation almost. I really look forward to sitting in, on my couch and putting in a, a, just an epic game, uh, you know, something like Deus Ex Human Revolutions, or uh, I might play Half-Life 2. I'm kind of debating which one I'm going to play next. Uh, Fallout 3, I've got some masterpieces I'm really looking forward to playing. So for me, it's about escapism, pure and simple. That's why I started my show, Escape to Gaming. And that whole deal with my truck at the end of the videos with the burnout and everything, it's just a metaphor for just leaving the cares of work and, and everything behind me and just racing home and cracking a cold one and playing in front of my console. It's just a really enjoyable part of my life. I like it more than car restoration. I like it more than a lot of the expensive vacations and hobbies that I used to have. I can do it from the safety and the comfort of my, of my couch in front of my TV. And I really enjoy it. As a kid, it was more fun in the arcades. It was all about fun and hanging out with your friends. You could do anything with your friends. You could play with a slot car tracks or Hot Wheel tracks with my buds from school, and we had a blast. Video games are just something new, and it's you know it obviously was um it wasn't really until I played some early Commodore 64 games and some Atari 5200 and 2600. Uh, consoles at a couple friends, but primarily I kind of missed out on that childhood. So like I said before, it's almost like I'm reliving my childhood. Even going back now and getting all these PlayStation 2 and Xbox and PS1 games, it's in other words, it's like going back in time and um, making up for lost time. It's like now I can have all the toys that I never had as a kid. I can enjoy, back then it was books. All I had was my Jules Verne books and uh, some, you know, when I get a little bit older, I had some Stephen King books, and that was my form of escapism. That's all I had. I couldn't afford a console, unfortunately. Going to the arcades is fun, but it wasn't the same thing. But when I got my Commodore 64 and played all these really cool military sims and driving sims like Revs Plus and uh, Airborne Rangers from Microprose and Silent Service and uh, F-22, you know, Stealth Fighter and many wonderful games I just never get tired of, uh, Gunship. Uh, it just it, I could play for you know 30, 40 hours at a time, you know, each week, and just put in a tremendous amount of time. And it literally, I felt like I was really as simplistic and as rudimentary as those graphics were. I felt like I was really, you know, in that helicopter or uh, you know, flying through the Persian Gulf in a stealth fighter or whatever. That's the kind of immersion that I always have gone after. So today, with the new graphics and the, my new PlayStation 4, as cool as it is, I still get immersed. Uh, you know, whether it's playing an old game, you know, on the uh, PS2 or Xbox, like the Warriors, or playing something new, it's nice to just let the cares of the world <laughs> just melt away and play games. The movies I like almost as much. Uh, what's nice about video games, it's almost like an interactive cinematic experience. You can decide the outcome of the levels, the outcome of what happens with your character quite often, and I think that's really cool. So, for me, it's pure escapism. Uh, yes, it's fun, and like right now I'm playing Eileen, I kind of gravitate towards the really fun ones, like the driving racing games, or something mindless, you know, sometimes even just Trials uh, Evolution or something like that, I'll play an Xbox Live Arcade, I've been playing a lot of my uh, Call of Horrors Gunslinger, which is a blast, I love the arcade games, and to me it just, it almost harkens back to when arcades were fun, just go in and play Space Invaders, 
especially Galaxian was one of my favorites, or Sprint, or Centipede, uh, you know, Asteroids, any of those were just fantastic. I played the shit out of them and loved them. And it was all, it really was all about fun. There's times now where half of the time I just want fun and a good time. I'll just put in Grand Theft Auto V and just rail around and just have, you know, create mayhem and go off, off, the, off the deep end. <laughs> Uh, you know, stealing jets and uh, going on huge killing sprees or trying to see how fast I can get from one side of the map to the other. It's just, a, it's fun. And that part of it is more fun than immersion. Then there's times where I don't really want to roll my sleeves up. Like lately, I've been playing Singularity. And I've taken a break from that for a while because I'm just too tired. It's just, it's too intense. I don't want to miss any of the collectibles. I'm trying to take the time to go through the strategy guide as I go along. So, you know, that's for the most part is... Um, why I like the meaty games like you know Wolvenstein and whatever, but after playing so many Call of Duty games and even Wolvenstein, I said I gotta get it back into my driving. So I've been playing a little bit of Need for Speed Shift 2, which I haven't got, I haven't played that in probably seven or eight months. And I'm really having a lot of fun with that. I unlock quite a few cars and that, having a blast. Uh, and I'm kind of jumping back and forth between that and you know this Ultimate Carnage flat out game, which is highly recommended. In fact, I'll probably be doing some kind of a, either a review or an impressions video of that pretty soon. So, uh, anyway, that's my uh, my little two cents on um, gaming. Uh, like I said, it's part of it is kind of making up for me personally. I, I feel like I'm even my little game room here. I'm kind of making up for lost time. Now I can have all the wonderful toys that I want in collectibles and um, uh, just even art books and strategy guides. I just love looking at all of my little toys and collectibles. I, I, all the things as a kid, I really wasn't allowed to have a lot of this kind of stuff. I had a few Hot Wheels and things, but really very few toys. A few board games and that was it. So I'm like a kid in a candy store with all this stuff. Quite often I say about my cat Vinny, you know, I spoil him rotten and my wife says, oh God, I just gave him treats. Like, I know, but I want him to have all the things as a young cat I wasn't allowed to have. And uh, so <laughs> it's kind of my way of spoiling him too. So uh, anyway, um, hope you guys like this, my you know, little video response. Probably went a little bit overboard. Um, but I really like Dave's post. Always has very thought-provoking questions. And it got me thinking to really the core of why I do what I do, why I game, why I put so much importance and a huge pie, a slice of my life and my thinking goes towards gaming. And it really is, it's a hobby, it's fun, I like the collectible part of it, I like the interaction with my friends that are like-minded, that are, you know, gaming nerds like myself, I think it's cool. I like going back to the roots of Doom and Duke Nukem 3D and uh, the original Syndicate and Wastelands and stuff. I think it's so neat to, to be a part of the, the whole gambit of gaming. So that's a big part of it. The fun definitely is a part of it, and escapism is definitely a, a, a supreme part of it. That's why I can play, you know, many of these wonderful games and put in over 100 hours in Grand Theft Auto V or 35 hours in Far Cry 3 or something because I'm just, I like getting lost in it. I can forget about customers and headaches and, oh God, I forgot I left something at that job. I got to drive all the way back and go get it. And sometimes it's just nice just to push all that aside, crack a beer and just forget about your worries. So, Dave, this video response is for you. Oh, thanks for the shout-out, by the way. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you liked your wonderful toys. I had a ball sending those to you. I'm glad you got a kick out of them. And uh, as you can see, I got another Hawaii shirt. I got tons of these. So if you want more, let me know. I got them all different sizes. To that one I gave you probably is a little on the large size. But Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. And um, just enjoy the hobby for what it is. Just enjoy it at face value. Uh, some games are better than others. Some experiences are more fun than others, but I have a ball with the whole gambit of it. If you don't like one game, take it out and put another one. That's the beauty of it. So uh, enjoy the hobby. Uh, enjoy your weekend this weekend. And uh, just have a great time. That's what life's all about. Thanks for watching.